What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So it's been about a month since I built my own custom Android TV system and honestly it's held up better than I expected. In this video we're gonna take a quick look on how it's performing, what's working well, what needs some tweaking and whether it's still worth building something like this in 2025. I'll show you how I got it set up from the remote and the controller pairing to media playback and even a bit of gaming. This was built completely from scratch using Android TV ISO that I got from the Telegram group. And I made a few small changes since the original video, so let's jump in. And if this kind of DIY tech stuff is your thing, go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing. I got more projects like this coming up and you don't want to miss them. So here's a quick recap of how I got this up and running. I didn't use an emulator or install it like a typical OS. Instead I followed the method from this video to install Android TV directly onto an SSD. I created two partitions, a small FAT32 boot partition and a larger NTFS storage partition. Then I manually copied over in FAT32 partition files like boot, FE, ISO Linux, initrd.image and all kernel files, then copy system image all kernel files to the NTFS partition. After that I extracted data.image to the NTFS partition. Once that was done, I set up the BIOS to boot from SSD and that was it. Full Android TV running natively on this mini PC. No installer, no bloat, no dual boot, just straight to Android every time I powered it on. I am running all of this on a Lenovo M910Q, that's a tiny form factor PC with an Intel Core i5-7500T, 16GB of RAM and a SATA 3 SSD. Nothing crazy, but it's more than enough to run Android TV smoothly. It's compact, low power and honestly perfect for this kind of setup, whether you're streaming, browsing or doing some light gaming. Booting this thing up is super simple, just hit the power button like it's a classic PC setup and a few seconds later you write into Android TV. So just to show you, this custom build is running Android 13 and out of the box we get about 63 gigs of usable storage, which is plenty for app streaming and even some game installs. Now let's get our remote set up. I'm starting with Fire TV remote and we're doing this all over Bluetooth. Super easy to pair and once it's connected it just works like you'd expect. After that, I'm also adding the EZSMX controller, again Bluetooth pairing here, no dongles or adapters needed, works great for navigation the UI and jumping into some games.
as you can see everything is working great smooth performance no glitches now let's jump into some media streaming we'll start with youtube loads up fast video playback is clean and everything works great the fire stick remote handles navigation really well here too which makes the whole experience feels just like a proper android tv box Okay, now let's do a quick restart, just to make sure everything stays connected, especially our Fire Stick remote. And as you can see, it doesn't stay connected after reboot, but no big deal. To bring it back, just hold the home button on your Fire Stick remote for about 5 seconds. After that, it reconnects and works like normal. Quick fix and you're good to go. Now, this custom Android TV box handles Jellyfin like a pro. Wherever you're streaming local content over your network or pulling from an external drive, playback is smooth, scrubbing is fast, and interface runs perfectly with this Fire Stick remote. Honestly, for a setup like this, Jellyfin is a perfect match. Totally replace the need for a more expensive streaming box. Now, for easy file transfers, I've been using File Manager app super handy for moving stuff to and from the device just open it up and hit the start service button it will generate an ip address and login details that you can use right from your pc from there you can drag and drop files directly over wi-fi no cables no fuss makes loading up your media or apks really convenient now i do want to mention games like fortnite won't run on this build and that's mainly due to we divine l3 limitation so no full DRM or high-end online games here. But on the bright side, other games like Roblox and Stardew Valley work surprisingly well. Performance is smooth, controls are responsive with the Bluetooth controller. And honestly, for casual gaming, this setup handles things better than I expected. So yeah, after a full month with this custom Android TV build, I'm honestly impressed. It's fast, reliable and super flexible for media streaming, light gaming and even file management. Sure, it's not perfect, you're limited by Wii Divine L3, so some apps and games won't work. But for DIY Android TV box on a budget, this setup delivers way more than I expected. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future project like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.